Alright, hello YouTubers, this is another video on a 1997 GMC Safari front brake change. And of course this applies to the Astro Safari. Technically this uh, quick how-to tutorial on brake change applies to any vehicle with a rotor. Of course there's going to be some deviations, so if you have any questions, please ask below. As always, if you like this video, please like the video and give me comments so I know how you would like these videos to look like in the very near future. Uh, for example, I've noticed that some folks will complain that I didn't show the whole process. And to me, that's kind of boring because if I tell you what to do, what you know, screw sizes and whatnot, that should be sufficient. But again, I need your help. So of course, for this job, you will need some pre-88. That's a personal preference because you can coat your hands and that way all the grease will just wash off. You'll need a 3.8. Now, in this case, I do believe just using your ratchet would be good enough. Um, but I may have this because for this particular vehicle to get in the, the bolts to take off the caliper, this is to take off the caliper in the back, you may need something that's a little deeper. You'll need a C-clamp, and I'll show you why later. And that's because the piston in the caliper, uh, when you put in new pads, you'll need to push the piston back in because your new pads are going to have a lot more material in it. I usually use Raybestos, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, or PBRs. Of course you will need new rotors and as always make sure you're on a leveled ground, be safe, use your jack stands, make sure your jack is in upright precision so that you can quickly pull it down or ask for help. I like to put the tires underneath the vehicle for a little bit of clearance, you know, if the vehicle really does fall. Let's hope that will never happen. Of course, you'll need brake fluid. You'll need a container to get your old brake fluid when you bleed your brakes. Again, you're pushing that piston. There's a good chance you might introduce some air into the system. Brake cleaner. Right, and you also want to properly dispose of it. Maybe a little trouble light. In this case, I'll need it so I can show you guys how to do the brake job. Now, it's a little bit interesting. This is a laser thermometer. It's actually for my uh, pizza oven and whatever else. It's actually very helpful to have one of these guys. You can buy it for us Canadians at Canadian Tire on sale for $20. Of course, I bought one that's a little nicer. And the reason why is if you take a look at my brakes here, you'll see a problem. You're going to say there's rust. It's more than just rust. Let me grab the tub light and show you the pad. All right because maybe you'll think part of the problem is the pad, but it's not. Here you go. In fact, if you can take a quick look, you can see the pad looks like it's chewed up a little bit more on the top, closer to caliper. And indeed, it is. Because what you see here, the shiny bit, that's more rotor. On the top, right here, that you see all the rust, that's supposed to be part of the rotor too. But it looks like my brakes have been eating the top more. And let's check, go check the other side, see if it's the same thing. And sure enough, it's the same thing, and even worse. Now, this side is worse, probably because I suspected a caliper issue. Now before I explain about that, while showing you that little laser gun, basically when this happens, it's probably because you have either a bad caliper the piston is not working properly, or a line pressure issue. So maybe your flex hose needs to be changed, or maybe all those rusted steel brake lines need to be changed. Now in my case, it's not completely rusted yet, it's actually looking okay. And if you check my YouTube channel, you'll know not long ago, I had to change the whole rear line because it did rust and crack. And therefore, my hope is, because I've never seen this problem, on this particular truck, on my truck, that uh, this issue, since it's on both sides, is going to be caused for when the rear line was having issues and therefore the pressure in the truck had differed. So I just want to share that with you so when you take a look at your vehicle, I mean ideally everything's supposed to be smooth, you can inspect for any fracture cracks, obviously that's going to tell you other problems with inconsistent braking hot spots hot spots are very obvious obviously you're going to have hot spots and that's going to be um, it could also be your ABS that's acting up or whatnot um, look for the pad even wear and as I showed you mine wasn't but make sure it's not on the horizontal meaning um, you know like more wear on this side than here okay and um, what's the other common one that happens 
uh, pulling a brain fart. But anyways, ask questions below. So I'm going to remove this and I'll show you guys bits and pieces here and there. Right, talk about major brain fart. So the reason why I was showing you guys that little laser gun is because when I thought I was having a sticking caliper on the other side, that's because I was getting a little bit of grinding noise. And the grinding noise is most likely happening because of this, right? Because I'm chewing more at the top. So what I did was I basically carried my laser gun and when I thought it was sticking, uh, what I did was I quickly pull aside or when I got to wherever I was going because it was grinding a lot and every time I touched the brakes it go away, um, I quickly jumped out and used this to basically point at the rotor through my tire and look at the temperature and run to the other side and check it. And of course, if you have a constant on caliper, it should be a little bit obvious because you should be pulling to one side, the side that is obviously sticking, right? But in some case, it might be on and off, on and off, the heat temperature of your rotor should differ and that's how I troubleshooted a, a friend's Audi one time and uh, that was the problem so I just gave him this and he pointed at it and then checked the other side and he was significantly high. I don't remember the numbers anymore but that's why this is a very invaluable tool if you think you have a stuck caliper. It's important to note that during this process your fluids would change. You should probably check it beforehand to see how low it was and just because it's low doesn't mean you need to fill it up because remember as you push that piston in the fluid is going to come back up. Alright so silly me, yes of course you need this because that's a hex. It's a 3 8 hex bolt okay so using your 3 8 directly will not work. And what you're going to do is, sorry let me show you again, this is obviously the rotor. Here's your caliber. This is your first bolt okay, that you're going to take off and then there's one more on the bottom so this goes right in and then there's one more right here all right just two pull them out and the caliper is what we call floating so it's going to come off hopefully with ease if it doesn't wiggle a little bit if it really doesn't what you can do since you know you're going to be changing your brake pad you can um, wedge sorry it's just a tight fit here let me see if i can get the camera here we go. You can wedge a uh, straight head or like um, a wrench or something like that and just push. You can push this piston in and that'll give you some space to be able to pull it out. Alright, there's the bolts. Just clean them up a little bit with the brake cleaner. And here's the caliper. It's more loose now, but again, if it doesn't come off right away, like I said, you can just push this piston in a little bit. Okay, I'm doing this one hand. It's very easy to push in, and then it'll be loose. Alright. Trying to get this camcorder to stay so you guys can see the removal. Pretty simple. Once you get it loose enough. So it might help if you have a little um, mallet, a light one. There we go. And here we go. And the other thing you want to try to do is uh, beforehand get something to rest your caliper on. Okay, so that you don't leave it dangling, but I usually rest it like so. Alright, and then we're good. So, here's our caliper and the brake pads. It's actually kind of hard to do one hand. Okay, come, on. come on out. Okay, with two hands I can take it out pretty easily. Um, anyways, as you see, it's coming off. I'm going to check for wear. It's pretty even. And sure enough, on the top, for whatever reason, remember I flipped around on the top, it is grooved in quite a bit more. Alright. And this guy here just popped the screwdriver in to pull it out. Okay. And then this comes out too. Alright, and what I like to do is do a quick mock-up. Everything fits really good, nice and snug. There's no wiggle room. 
well, that one's wiggling because once it's on the road, it'll be nice and tight. And the reason why is because, well, obviously if your new pads don't fit well, got the wrong one, go back to the parts store. But it's also because I'm about to show you guys how I push back in that piston. And before I do, old one, new one, that little groove in there that's pretty much gone, the new one in the groove, <laughs> the old one in that groove, and the new one in the groove. So I'm going to put back in the old one because I'm going to use this old one to push that piston as I was mentioning about. Okay. I put a little um, nice soft wood in the back so then it doesn't damage the caliper, uh, the caliper and the front I don't care because I know my new brakes the new pads are good so I'm just going to use the old pad and push it in which gives me that perfect applying pressure. Putting the calipers in I take the new roller and kind of do a pre-fitting. Yep. It should go in. Yeah. Don't drop that caliper. Okay, we're good. We're good to put on the new rotor. And of course, you know, for me with this guy, because it doesn't have the hub, you just take off the old rotor, put on the new rotor, and then caliper goes back on. <sighs> Basically, the reason why I went going is uh, you got the bolts that these guys will go in, you have to align it on the back. Let's see if I can show you guys. Um, nice and tight in there. Uh, nah, you're not gonna, I'm not gonna be able to show it on the camcorder unless this thing has like one of those tube videos, but in short, this bolt goes into the caliper bit up here. And of course that aligns to the bracketing right here. This is the brake bracketing. It's got the screw. And so this comes um, into it. So obviously you have to align those two holes and it's quite knobby. So anyways, screw it back on. Um, maybe spray a little bit of brake cleaner on what I've touched. But doesn't that look pretty, hey? And for you guys with your, you know, sports vehicles, it's worth it to do the powder coated caliper. Uh, the truck, eh, whatever, gets dirty enough and you're not going to see it with these type of tires anyways. So, if you're watching this, and you're thinking about powder coating your caliper by yourself, or spray painting it, or buying it colored, do it. Alright, so here you go, new rotor, new pads, and if by chance you need to change the caliper, it's very simple, you already had everything off. All you had to do is remove your flex hose on this truck here, it's either a 10 or 11 millimeter socket back here, and if you had to replace your flex hose, pretty simple, just take out the other end and change it up because you can buy these prefabbed okay and uh, yeah just pop on the new caliper do that and of course you have to bleed it this video I'm not going to show you how to bleed because you can refer to my replacing of the main line it's pretty extensive just uh, kind of fast forward to the end of the video and you'll get to the bleeding bit uh, the quick recap on how to do that is just pop pop this off so then you can see your bleeder valve um, pop on your one-way tube hopefully it's one way if it's not you're gonna need someone to help you out okay uh, and anyways you pop that on so that air can't come back in. Go make sure your brake reservoir is full, pump your pedal um, so it has some pressure, come here, release it, and you'll probably already see some come out. Sometimes I use a two by four to push in the pedal. Anyways, just go back to the driver's seat, pump it maybe just two, three times. Your brake pedal is gonna go right to the floor, let go, come back here, tighten it back up, observe for any of the um, air. Of course, if you change this, your caliper, you're going to definitely have air that you're going to have to bleed out, okay? Um, tighten it back up, uh, fill up the reservoir again. I like to pump for a little bit of pressure, come back, and when you release, you're going to see a little bit come out again. Go, push the brake, and more will come out. And as you'll see in my rear line video, I use the camcorder so that I can play back and I'll see the air coming out. And in my case, in that video, um, my, my one-man bleeder valve wasn't working well, and so I actually saw... Um, air and fluid going back in so it's like oh shoot that's not good so anyways uh, this job probably 45 minutes your first time maybe two three minutes because you're going to be very cautious it's definitely something that you can attempt and save yourself quite a bit of money on maintenance depending on your vehicle you might have to do your brakes often and depending on where you live 
uh, for example in the States if you drive a lot I I know quite a few people with the same vehicle here that they use it for work and you know it's got tools in the back and everything and it's heavier they're changing their brakes almost every six months so it's definitely a job you want to learn to do by yourself to save money um, anyways I'm gonna have to repeat on the other end because that's not done yet so hope you enjoyed this video if you have questions please ask below if you have to use any grease whatsoever while you're doing your brake job, go get brake grease, okay? There's actually a specific grease for that, and it's usually without carbon. Now, the other main reason why I'm doing this, anti-seize, when to use it. You know, as long as you clean everything pretty good and there's no rust, you're good. Even if there's rust, clean away the rust. If it's not that bad, it's fine. If you have lots of rust on your bolts, whatever, it probably means you should change the bolts, okay? Don't get lazy. This is where it's nice to have a buddy who can help run you to the parts store or you know, have that second vehicle. Um, unless your second vehicle is also the toy vehicle, then you got a problem. So, if your tire is not coming off easily, Really all you have to do is just give it a few quick heaves on the top and it'll usually come off. Some people call it the butt, the butt hit, okay? <laughs> just use your bum and hit it on the top and it'll probably come off. On your old rotors, now I can't give you a good example because I don't have this problem, but working on friends' vehicles and stuff, especially the Hondas, I don't know why, okay? Um, the, the older style with just the four lugs, so older 90s, um, late 90s Hondas, okay? You'll see where the tire is being stuck. And all you have to do is just add a little bit of your anti-seize onto there. Now when I say a little bit, um, seriously saying just a little bit, think of it like a little pimple, a pimple dot, a zip dot, okay? That's all you have to do, just a little bloop, and that's all you need, okay? On where it looks like it's sticking. And then you won't have any more problems. All right, so thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please ask. Ciao's.